Hello and welcome back to Supposedly Fun. My name is Greg and I am here today to do a book haul revisit for the month of October. This is where I look at book hauls past to determine how many of the books that I brought into my library I have read, how many I would still like to read, how many I have unhauled, and start thinking about whether or not there are any that I need to unhaul or would like to unhaul in now or in the near future. Just a quick note, I will not be spending any time talking about what these books are about. There are a lot of them. We have four different Octobers to look at, so I don't want to spend the time doing that. It would make this a really long video. If you want information about a particular book, I will have links to the original book haul videos in the description box down below. You can go there. I will talk about the plot description of the book. I will read a little bit from the opening. I usually do that in my book hauls, but I'm not going to spend any time doing it here. This is really just to talk about whether or not I've read the books, and it's my way of trying to hold myself accountable for the books that I purchase and bring into my library, and hopefully it's going to help make me a more intentional book purchaser. I think it's already given me a better idea of how I read, and at least that's the intention of it. Now, again, we have four years of October's to look at. We're going to start with the most recent one, October of 2022, and we're going to go back to October of 2019. So let's just dive in and get this, this thing going. October 2022 is going to be good. A lot of these are not going to be good. So let's just rip off the band-aid and get going, but we're going to start with a bit of a win. So in October of 22, 2022, the first book that I brought into my library was The Sheep Queen by Thomas Savage. I was interested in this book because I absolutely loved the book The Power of the Dog and wanted to read something else by him. I did read it, and I liked it not anywhere near as much as I did The Power of the Dog. I would still be interested in reading more by Thomas Savage. I don't have any plans to get rid of it, so it will continue to live on my shelf, and at least it's a success story. I did manage to read it. Then we have La Bastarda, a novel by Trifonia Malibia Obono, translated by Lawrence Schimmel. This is a tiny little thing. This was for the LGBTQ plus in translation read along for last year. I did read this. I actually read it on the plane when Joel and I were going to Italy. I don't know if I've mentioned that we went to Italy last year, but yes. Uh, so I read this on the plane and uh, it, it was okay. I didn't love it, but it's a tiny little thing. So it, it's not in danger of going anywhere anytime soon. Uh, and at least again, it's a success story. Next is Winter Love by Han Su Yin. This is something I actually listened to on audio while we were in Italy. And again, did I mention we went to Italy? And I liked it so much that I actually ordered myself a copy. Now, technically, in my book haul revisits, in order to keep them short, I am not including things that I have read or had read before I purchased them. In this instance, I just wanted to include this because I liked it enough that this is just my way of saying, if you are interested in this book, go check out the original book haul video. I spent a lot of time talking about it, and I really liked this book. So think about it. It's only small. You could dunk it in your coffee. It's a very good book. Then we have Demon Copperhead by Barbara Kingsolver. I did read this. I absolutely loved it. It was my favorite read from 2022. I will link the video where I listed my favorites in the description box down below as well. It also co-won the Pulitzer Prize for Fiction. I will include my reaction to that down below because I was gobsmacked and really excited for Demon Copperhead. A little less so for Trust, but really excited for Demon Copperhead. So, yeah, big success story there. Then we have the only book in this book haul that I didn't read, Liberation Day by George Saunders. This is a story collection. I actually have a signed edition of it. So I'm on a bit of a roller coaster with George Saunders. I thought that 10th of December was fine, and I listened to the audio version of Lincoln and the Bardo, which is a fantastic audio production, and I really liked it a lot. But so we're 50-50. I didn't like one, or one was just okay, and one I liked. The feedback I got on this really kind of deflated any curiosity I had about it. It was very mixed, and for that reason, I don't really feel any sense of urgency to pick it up anytime soon. I admit, when I was having a crunch for space at the end of last year, I did almost think about unhauling it, but I didn't. 
and I'm not crunched for space right now, so it will be there, but I feel like it's very likely that at this time next year, I will still not have read this book. And if that trend continues, then maybe I'll think about getting rid of it. Until then, it's fine hanging out on my bookshelves. So of the five books that I brought into my library last year, I've read four. That's really good. And I have not unhauled any. One of them might be an unhaul in the future, but not anytime soon. So we're doing fine. Now, October of 2021 was a big one. Lots of books came into my library then. Let's see how I did. I have a feeling this is not going to go well. We have Taste by Stanley Tucci. So at least we're starting with a success story because I did read this book. I had an advanced copy of it and I liked it. Um, he did let me down. One of his restaurant recommendations in, in Italy was only okay. However, I did enjoy the book, and I did read it. Then we have Aristotle and Dante Dive into the Waters of the World. I did read this book, and it was one of my favorite reads from 2021. Only beaten out by, I believe, The Power of the Dog. I think it was really high up there. So I really liked this, and I reread it this year as well. So there you go. I've read it twice. The book's so nice, I read it twice. Now things are going to start getting bleak fast. Harlem Shuffle by Colson Whitehead. I have not read this. I would still like to. I need, And now there's an extra barrier for entry because Colson Whitehead's newest book is a sequel to this. So before I can read that book, I need to catch up to this one. So haven't read it yet, but I'm still hoping to and would be... Uh, I, I think I'm likely to get around to doing it. Please Don't Sit on My Bed in Your Outside Clothes by Phoebe Robinson is a book that I have not read yet. This is an example of something where I think I kind of knew better. So I'm probably more likely to listen to this book on audio. That is something that I have really learned about myself doing book haul revisits. I'm much more likely to listen to nonfiction books on audio than I am to read them in physical form. However... I like Phoebe Robinson, and this is the first book that was released from her publishing imprint, Tiny Rep Books, which is for Tiny Reparations Books. It is a publishing imprint that aims to lift up diverse authors who might otherwise have a difficult time getting published and celebrate their stories and share their stories. And so this was the first book for that, so I wanted to make sure I purchased a copy of the book in order to support Tiny Rep Books and its mission, and in order to support Phoebe Robinson for uh, launching that mission in a publishing imprint. She used to host a podcast that I still listen to and love, even though the podcast has not produced a new episode since 2018 called Two Dope Queens. And it, it's a fantastic podcast if you would like to go back and listen to it as well. So haven't read it, and I fully admit that I would probably listen to this on audio much faster than I would read the physical book. However, it's fine hanging out and living here because I like Phoebe Robinson and I like what her publishing imprint aims to do. Now we have Monster in the Middle by Tiffany Unique. This is a book that I was really excited about last year and I feel like I'm the only person who ever talked about it. So if you have read this book, please let me know what you thought of it in the comment section down below because I feel like I, have, I don't know anyone else who read it. And the fact that... It feels like nobody else was talking about it. Really dropped the sense of urgency. I would still like to get to this book, but I don't have that sense of urgency anymore, if that makes sense. So, still want to get to it. I'm glad I purchased it and have this copy sort of at the ready for whenever I am ready to read it. Um, but the urgency, if I'm being honest, is pretty well gone at this point. Then there is A Dutiful Boy by Mosin Zaidi. The subtitle is A Memoir of Secrets, Lies, and Family Love. I actually had to order this from the UK. I believe this is something that Jen the Librarian is responsible for. If I remember correctly, she talked about it on her channel and it sounded really interesting. So I ordered a copy from the UK because it was not available in the United States. Have not gotten around to it yet. However, I still really want to get to it. And uh, I... 
still, I thought about adding it to my pile of possibilities for June, which is when I read uh, Pride books, uh, books that have queer authors, queer stories, queer characters, things like that. So this seems like a natural fit for next June, possibly. So still something that I would like to get to, and it's just that I'm not really in a rush to get to it. Then we have Competing with Idiots. Herman and Joe Mankiewicz, A Dual Portrait by Nick Davis. If you follow along, you know uh, my sort of side hustle in terms of interests is uh, film, like old film, the Academy Awards, and all of that stuff. So this sort of fits into that. Again, this is a book that I would be much more likely to listen to on audio than I would be to read in physical form. However, this was actually something that I got for free from the publisher, which is Knopf. So Thank you to them, and I would still like to get around to reading it, so I'm happy to have it, and I would love to get around to it, hopefully sometime soon. Then we have Senkofa by Chibundu Onuzo. I have not gotten around to reading this, and again, I feel like the urgency has died. I do occasionally see it on my shelf because it has this great blue-green cover and think, oh yeah, that sounded like an interesting book. But I don't know when I will ever get to this book. And I feel like if you told me you have to choose between this one and Monster in the Middle, I feel like I would choose Monster in the Middle. But again, if you've read either book, let me know what you thought of them in the comment section down below. It's not going to go anywhere right now, but this is another case where if I haven't read it in like two, three years when we do another revisit, potentially I'll be thinking of a revisit. Or if I start running out of space in my library, then we'll think about it. Then we have The Lincoln Highway by Amor Tolls. So, <laughs> I have still managed to not read a single Amor Tolls book. And at some point, I really need to fix that. I don't have a copy of Rules of Civility, but I feel like that is the one that I would actually want to read first. People are really excited for Gentlemen of Moscow, which I do have a copy of. And the feedback on The Lincoln Highway has been a little more mixed than those two, but I have heard a lot of really positive things. I would still like to get around to it. I do feel like this is something I might be more likely to listen to on audio, but because I've heard good things about Amor Tolls and his writing, and because he's an author that I, I'm, I've reached something aspirational, like I really want to get to him at some point, I'm totally fine holding on to the book and getting to it at some point, hopefully soon. So that's nine books that I brought into my library in October of 2021. I've only read two. And that's not great. But I haven't unhauled any of the books. And I don't have any immediate plans to unhaul the books either. So that's at least something, I guess. I'll give myself partial credit for that. Uh, there are some that maybe if I haven't read them at some point in the future, like two, three years from now, then we might be talking about an unhaul. But everything is fine until then. Thankfully, the October of 2020 book haul is a lot smaller. Like, a lot smaller. So the first book that I brought into my library then was Love by Toni Morrison. I absolutely love Toni Morrison. She is an author that I am hoping to sort of work my way through. At some point, I got a copy of this book so I could do it as a buddy read. And the person I was buddy reading with had already read a lot of Toni Morrison's books. This was one of the only ones that they had not read. So we sort of deferred to what they had not read rather than what I had not read. Because I have, I have still not read the majority of Toni Morrison's books. But I'm happy to be working my way through. This one, I would say, was just okay. I liked it, didn't love it. And because I love Toni Morrison, I'm... I have been working on collecting all of her books. I don't think you can see them because they're just on the other side of this Lori Moore book here on my shelf. Like, they're just, just out of range. Um, but I own copies of all of her fiction books, and I'll keep that one to stick with them. Then we have My Beloved, The Secret Lives of Church Ladies by Disha Filia. This came to my attention because it was on the long list for the National Book Award for Fiction. I believe it made it onto the short list as well, but it did not ultimately win. And it just sounded really interesting. I did read it. I absolutely loved it. I keep recommending it to people because, again, it is my beloved. I love this book so much. It's a story collection. If you haven't read it, give it a try. I really love it, and I know a lot of other people have read it and uh, told me that they loved it as well. So if you haven't read it, get yourself a copy, 
however you would like your local library, your local independent bookstore, look for an audio, whatever you would like to do. I just really recommend that book. Then there was Leave the World Behind by Ruman Alam. This was also in the mix for the National Book Award that year. I did read it. So October 2020, flashback. The presidential election was getting ready to happen. I was super, super stressed about the world and politics and all of that stuff. So I think I read this book at the wrong time. But I also think it was kind of the book. I didn't quite like it. So I got rid of it. It's not here anymore. And that is fine. So... The final one is Whatever Happened to Interracial Love, Stories by Kathleen Collins. I have not managed to read this yet, but I frequently remind myself that I want to read it. I actually thought about picking it up when I was in a slump after we lost our dog, Jamie, and having a really hard time reading. I thought a story collection, for one thing, would be good, but also it's a very short book. So I thought about it. The problem is I just really wasn't reading anything. So I did not get to it then. But that just goes to show that there's a lot more urgency attached to this one than there is attached to, say, Sankofa. It is what it is. So this is definitely going to stick around, and hopefully I will get to it soon. So there were only four books in my October 2020 book haul. I've read three out of four, so that's great. I'm going to take that to the bank, and I have unhauled one, and I still have one that I want to read. And uh, we will work on that. We're back to a sizable book haul for October of 2019, and this one includes some unhauls. Let's dive in. October 2019, the first book I brought into my library was Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier. I am a fan of the movie adaptation of this book, but I had never read the book, S particularly since I joined BookTube. I have heard really great things about the book. There are a lot of people who just love it, love it, love it. So I found a copy at my local used bookstore and brought it home, and at some point I will get around to reading it. This, I would say, is the first book we're running into that's more of a library builder. I didn't have immediate plans to get to it. It's just something that I like to have in my library, so my chances of eventually getting to it kind of increase. So someday I will manage to read Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier. I missed my chance this year to read The Longest Journey by E.M. Forster because we are doing the E.M. Forster read-along, a group of us led by Jen the Librarian and kind of me. So I will link information about the group down below uh, if you are curious. The year's almost over, but there are still more E.M. Forster readings to do. So I missed this. I might try to loop back. At this point, it is, I think, the only E.M. Forster novel that I have not read, and I should fix that at some point. I missed I missed the month where we did it this year, but I will try to loop back. Feedback on it from the group was not great, but I would, just for the completion's sake, like to get to it at some point. Uh, then we have Nothing to See Here by Kevin Wilson. I read a different book by Kevin Wilson and did not like it, and that allowed me to sort of say, you know what, if I listen to this, uh, if I read this book, I'm likely to do it on audio, so why am I holding on to the space? And people did make a case for it, but I ultimately decided that uh, I didn't feel like holding on to it. So I got rid of it, and I still do have the audio saved in my uh, Scribd account, so hopefully, uh, maybe someday I will get around to it. I need to let the bad taste of the other one that I didn't like go away before I even think about trying another Kevin Wilson book. Then we have The Water Dancer by ta Coates. I have not gotten around to this. I've heard mixed feedback on it, but I am still interested, so I'm going to hold on to it, and it will continue to be on my shelf. Then there was Imaginary Friend by Stephen Chbosky. I brought that into my library because it's a really big book. It's supposed to have, like, scary vibes and feels, and I always think that something like that sounds perfect for winter. So I had this grand ambition that in winter I would just kind of curl up on the couch with this chunky horror book and it would be perfect. And then I never did. And I didn't hear great things about the book. So I said goodbye because it was really taking up a lot of space. I really had a crunch for space last year before we expanded my library and uh, I just made a tough call. And then... There's Find Me by Andre Alsaman, which I was really nervous about in the first place because I don't think 
Call Me By Your Name needed a sequel. I really like the way it ends and leaves things. And even though this is only sort of a quasi-sequel, um, I was I was really nervous. However, I did purchase a copy, obviously, because it's in this book haul. Revisit. And uh, the feedback I got on it was really terrible. And including Joel, my husband. He read it and hated it. So I did attempt to start it on audio after I got all that really bad feedback. And I was really not liking it at all. So I think I got maybe an hour into it and just said, you know what? I'm going to stop. I'm going to unhaul the book. And I'm going to go about my life pretending Call Me By Your Name has no sequel and we're going to be fine. So that is what I have been doing. And it's worked out for me. And then there's A Ladder to the Sky by John Boyne. I had been excited about this one because I was a big fan of the Hearts Invisible Furies and wanted to try something else by John Boyne. I really did not like this book. In fact, the only reason I finished it was that Sean the Book Maniac and I were reading it together and he also hated it. So it became a sort of mutual hate read and that's the only thing that got both of us across the finish line. And as soon as it was done, I got rid of it because I didn't want it taking up space on my shelf. And there you go. Then we have a total failure of mine, Duck's Newberry Report by Lucy Ellman, which was shortlisted for the Booker Prize. I was really excited for this book, and I got it from the library. And I did actually start it. I think I got about 35 pages in and then thought, you know what? I don't want to do this on the library's time. I'm going to get my own copy of the book. So I did thinking that that would be easier, and yet somehow here we are, all these years later, and I haven't read it. And I really would like to fix that someday. So even though it takes up a lot of space on my shelf, I am holding on to this book, and I will get to it someday. This is my white whale. My white whale is a duck. <laughs> and I will get around to it. I've heard great things about it, and I'm looking forward to it. And then we have Belonging, A German Reckons with History and Home by Nora Krug. This is a graphic memoir. I did read this. It was a very quick read, and um, it was okay. If I was having a crunch for space in my graphic novels section, I would probably think about getting rid of this one. However, it's fine hanging out there. Uh, I do think it was interesting enough that it's worth holding on to, uh, but... If I ever start running out of space, this would be something that could potentially be let go, but it's not in any danger at the moment. So, in October of 2019, I brought nine books into my library. Again, nine. there were two book halls that had nine books in October. It's, it's just interesting. So, I brought nine books I've read two and a half, and that half is generous, because as I said, I barely got into the audio of Find Me. It just, for for ease, we're going to say it's a half. So two and a half out of nine, that's not great. And I unhauled three, including that half book. So work to be done, for sure. But most of the books are these books are still things that I would like to get to. So... Overall, I did not do the math. Let me do that real quick, and then I'll just edit so you won't even notice any time has passed at all. Okay, we did our quick math. So there were 27 books that I brought into my library over the last four Octobers. That's a lot. I've read 11 and a half of them. And again, the half is a little generous, but we're going to go with it. It's fine. So, yeah, there's work to be done, and uh, the good news is there were only four unhauls out of those 27 books, so it is what it is. And, like I said, most of these books are things that I'm totally fine having around and getting to at some point, so that's great. But if you have feedback on any of these books, uh, impressions, things that you would like to see me prioritize or would recommend that I prioritize, let me know in the comment section down below. That would be very much appreciated, as is your time watching this video. Thank you, as always. And I will be back. Until next time, happy reading.